Session extraordinary, public and solemn. This is an extraordinary public session in memoriam of His Excellency Mr. Richard Rehaus. His Excellency Jose Luis Garcia del Busto, Secretary General of the Academy, has the floor to inform us about the uh, initiatives taken within the uh, Royal Academy of uh, San Fernando in memory of His Excellency Richard Driehaus. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, members of the Academy, ladies, gentlemen, dear friends. The relationship of this Royal Academy with Mr. Richard Driehaus started through our dear colleague and fellow member of the Academy, Mr. Rafael Manzano, who received the Richard Rehouse Prize, maybe the most important architectural prize in the world of classical architecture, on March 27, 2010, at the John B. Murphy Auditorium in Chicago. This uh, prize was awarded by the University of Notre Dame in Indiana. Ever since that moment, the uh, uh, Rafael Manzano Prize for Traditional Architecture and Monument Restoration was established. Its first edition was held on October 26, 2012, right here in this very same hall in an event presided by Her Royal Majesty Elena de Borbon and sponsored by the uh, Maffre Foundation and the Richard Driehaus Charitable Lead Trust. And that uh, prize continues to be presented at this academy and has been presided in its last two editions by Mrs. Ana Pastor, Vice President of the Congress and uh, His Royal Majesty the Duke of Calabria in 2014. The then director of the Academy, Rafa Antonio Bonet, um, became friends with Mr. Richard Rehaus and told him about the model of the Prado Museum, which was based on the early project of architect Juan de Villanueva. This model had been built by Juan de Dios Hernández together with his colleague uh, Jesus Rey, and it was of great interest to Mr. Uh, Bonnet, the uh, uh, Charitable Lead Trust, Driehaus uh, Charitable Lead Trust, uh, took care of the expenses, and this model was acquired to be exhibited at the Academy. So, in October 2014, when we opened the Juan de Villanueva halls of this Royal Academy, the main room exhibited as the central piece this magnificent model of the first uh, design of the Prado Museum made by Juan de Villanueva in 1865 for the Natural Sciences Hall, which then later became the uh, uh, Prado Museum building. As a result of that generosity in 2014, uh, Richard Rehaus was proposed uh, to be appointed as the uh, as an honorary member of this academy, for which the uh, endorsement of three fellow members of the academy were were needed. Antonio Bonet Correa, Ismael Fernández de la Cuesta, and Jose Maria Luzon Nogue uh, made that endorsement in the extraordinary plenary session held on June 21st, 2014. Uh, Mr. Richard Rehaus was appointed honorary member of the Academy. At uh, the solemn uh, inception ceremony held in October 22, 2015, and presided by the uh, President of the Senate, Pio Garcia Escudero, Mr. Driehaus was accompanied by Mr. Antonio Gallego and Antonio Campo Baez, fellow members of the Academy. The speech 
that Mr. Driehaus gave on that occasion was the sense of place, and he was uh, answered, which was answered by Mr. Rafael Manzano Martos. Uh, in the same session, the fourth Rafael Manzano Prize was awarded to architect uh, Donald Gray. The Laudatio, which was read by Mr. Leon Greer. Since 2016, in other words, five years before we set up the uh, group of uh, patrons of the Academy, Mr. Driehaus was one of the pioneers of this initiative, and he acquired the commitment of donating annually the amount of 10,000 euros to our academy with the purpose of the, uh, fostering the study and the protection of uh, the arts and the uh, cultural heritage, which are the remit of our academy. And this has continued to be so every year and will continue in the future uh, in response to the will of Mr. Driehaus and in honor of this generous philanthropic uh, decision of our illustrious uh, fellow honorary member of the Academy. Mr. Rafael Manzano Martos now has the floor to make a tribute to Mr. Richard Driehaus. Your Excellencies, members of the Academy, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, this painful universal situation that has befallen us and that has humiliated like a biblical punishment the proud scientific despotism of our time has come to enter every home tearing away from us brothers and relatives, teachers and disciples, and so many other dear friends. Some wounded by the virus, unknown and mysterious, unknown to the most advanced modern medicine. Others, by the human reaction to improvised vaccines and medicines. Others, reviving forgotten toxins and defenses that coexisted in our worn-out organisms, more or less exhausted by the stressful life of our time. This clo close group of friends surrounding us weeps, has wept in these past months and will continue to weep in Spain in memory of an uh, unforgettable and singular friend, Richard Driehaus. Optimal advisors since his youth in the lands of America, an intelligent fiduciary and other economic activities and who very early in his life wanted to put the benefits of his daily work not to his own personal enrichment but to the artistic patronage conceived as a form of exercise of Christian charity. Richard Driehaus was a man who discovered, like few others, the beauty of architecture and the arts, which humanity has accumulated in its inalienable inheritance of the past, already diminished and deteriorated by a thousand words and disasters, and which he tried to save as the most important legacy of history. But it was not only a matter of preserving, consolidating or restoring this very rich, albeit deteriorated, deteriorated universal heritage, but also of ensuring, of ensuring that 
our century can enjoy it, increase it and enrich it with new achievements without destroying the heritage and using the forgotten classicism as a safe and effective instrument capable of prolonging that creative past embodied in the urban landscape of the historic cities and the rural landscape humanized by the hands of architecture whose works and ruins of the past constitute its best uh, complement. Not wishing to act in the face of other prices that sought to stimulate architectural modernity, but in a parallel search of a language that would not destroy the great urban heritage, he devoted his energies to the creation of a foundation dedicated to the promotion of teaching and the creation of new and modern classicism capable of creating a modern architecture compatible with the preservation of historic sites. The University of Notre Dame of Indiana and its School of Architecture, always supported by Richard Rehaus, has been the most perfect teaching laboratory of this theory that aims to save the little that remains of this rich and abused universal heritage. In parallel to the awards for architectural modernity, exercise without the necessary self-criticism, in many cases imposing and destructive of the past, He created the awards for balance and classical beauty for the preservation of the old construction techniques, awards that we continue to present today and that we want to be the tes best uh, testimony in his memory. Two princes of architecture have collaborated with him in this endeavor. First, the Prince of Wales, who for many years initiated the fight and defense of historic cities, especially in England through Imbau, our best partner in this prodigious adventure. The other one is the Aga Khan, who also initiated from his own foundation, which had glorious days, the defense of the architectural heritage of Islam, then subsequently, unfortunately, distorted by extraneous interests. And in Spain, it was Leon Crier, happily here today among us, fine universal inspector of all of the architectures that are built in the world, who cross the paths with Spain with those of uh, the charitable lead trust of Richard Driehaus today, united for 10 years with the Royal Academy of San Fernando, which has the defense of classicism and architectural perfection as one of its primary goals. Today, also in his name and in his memory, we present the annual awards created by him to an exceptional architect, Sergi Bastidas, classic but modern, as Mr. Modesto López Otero, unforgettable director of this house, would have defined him, who settled in our Balearic Islands and has been carrying out, carrying out an architectural work which is deeply integrated in the landscape of the Balearic Islands. Together with him, the fourth edition of this prize, which bears the name of its founder, Richard Driehaus, has been bestowed to a protector and patron of architecture and the mountain and maritime landscape of Cantabria from the positions of the Bank of Santander and the administration to which he has belonged, Jose Maria Ballester, art scholar and humanist, always faithful in the defense of seemingly lost causes. With this, we bid eternal farewell to Richard Rehaus as an honorary academician proposed in the days of the unforgettable Antonio Bonet and received in this house in a solemn public session under the presidency of Fernando Terán. There, he gave us a speech born from his soul about his sense of place as a classic conditioner of architecture and its 
a place in the landscape of the city, referring in his case to the fragment of the urban fabric of Chicago made up by a crossroad of streets which he took care of throughout his life, restoring the buildings he acquired to use as offices, museums and awards hall, keeping alive the stimulus to traditional architecture. Here in this house, he enriched his architectural museum room with a model of Villanueva's unfinished project for the Prado Museum, whose plans and blueprints are treasured by the Academy. But above all, he was an exemplary academic who, after taking off his visitors, visited us every year until his death, three times a year, coinciding with a meeting of the juries of the awards and the corresponding award-giving ceremonies. Today, we gather once again without his presence to remember him in a particularly painful year for what we consider his great Spanish family, with the presence of his most faithful friends, the Gallo couple, and our dearest Carol Wyant, as well as representatives of the Inbau Foundation, twinned with us since the first moment of the implementation of the awards in Spain. And we remember Richard as Jorge Manrique, remember his father in the couplets for the death of his father. And as thus the dying warrior prayed, without one gathering mist of shade upon his mind, encircled by his family, washed by affection's gentle eye, so soft and kind, his soul to him who gave it rose, God lead it to its long repose, its glory at rest, and though the warrior's son has said, its light shall linger round us yet bright, radiant, blessed. Thank you. El señor Don Robert Adam, Mr. Robert Adam, the chairman of INBAO, the International Network for International Building Architecture and Urbanism, has the floor to uh, introduce the winner of the Rafael Manzano Prize for New Com uh, Traditional Architecture. I'd like to thank Rafael Manzano for his very moving remembrance of Richard Driehaus. I want to express my sadness for his passing and my personal obligation to preserve his legacy. A part important, an important part of this legacy is the continuity of the Manzano Prize, which has been awarded to Sergi Bastidas this year, and the Richard Driehaus Medal to the Conservation of Heritage awarded to Jose Maria Ballester. The jury was especially impressed by the sense of place and the modesty of the work of Mr. Sergi Bastidas. His in-depth research on every site and in the case of existing buildings, his purpose to carry out an invisible intervention provide uh, his works with an in inevitably natural character. At the same time, it is worthy of mention the level of innovation and mastery of his new constructions, which produce an architecture which is bold and empathic at the same time. I see two uh, particular lessons in Sergio Bastida's work. On the one hand, the fluidity between the past and the present without the need to flaunt an appropriate modernity. On the other hand, just like last year's laureate, Mr. Martin San Juan, the way he provides he, the environment with a very special quality and truth. Mr. Jose Maria Ballester is a giant in the world of heritage. After training as a journalist, uh, during which he used to write a, a column on uh, heritage, he was promoted to the director of culture 
and cultural and natural heritage of the Council of Europe. And he had played a, a special role in the drafting of the European Landscape Convention, which was quite relevant subsequently for him. Among his many achievements, I will only mention the very essential connection between the heritage and a vibrant economy, especially in situations in which many buildings are threatened with abandonment. Understanding that heritage is not a collection of objects which are exhibited as if it was a museum, but rather an active part of a prosperous society is a very important uh, lesson and a very relevant one today. I would like to congratulate on my own behalf and on behalf of the jury both Sergi Bastidas and Jose Maria Ballester. I would like to mention now that these prizes and awards and this ceremony are possible thanks to the generosity of Richard Rehouse. Bless his memory. I would also like to thank the ECAVA Foundation, the Serra Enriquez Foundation, and the Royal Academy of uh, Fine Arts of San Fernando for their uh, strong support to make this event uh, possible. I would like to acknowledge the great architect uh, Rafael Manzano who gave his name and his inspiration to this prize. Finally, I would like to thank the organizers and all of the members of the jury who provide give their time and their support to this prize and make our meetings always a very nice occasion. Thank you. A continuación se proyectará un video now, a video will be shown of the work of architect Sergi Bastidas, who is the laureate and winner of the Esta tienda como daba dos calles, para mí era como si formara parte de la ciudad. Que la gente entra en la tienda para pasear. Es un bazar. Había una pequeña tienda de Teatro Viven y ellos compraban el resto del edificio que está totalmente abandonado. Eran 6 o 7 mil metros cuadrados de edificio, era un gran laberinto. Lo vi todo con un móvil, con la, la ventana de un móvil. Y de esta misma noche estuve hasta la madrugada haciendo el concepto principal de toda la tienda y de los seis o siete departamentos de la parte de arriba. Entonces se dejaron las fachadas y, y las dos paredes maestras que había. Y había unos signos de que había unos arcos entre dos paredes y efectivamente salieron dos arcos magníficos y tuve que crear un arco importante para lo que es el edificio y entonces pues creamos una gran abertura en todo lo que es la tienda eh, con una columna maciza en medio. Para mí la arquitectura tradicional mmm, realmente es algo que me viene sin tener de sentimiento. ¿eh? porque es, encuentro que es muy humana. Este encanto que tiene, pues ya lo dices al principio. Tengo ventaja porque hace prácticamente 40 años 
desde que llegué a Mallorca. Siempre he vivido en el campo porque es una parte muy romántica de vivir y siempre he vivido en fincas que estaban construidas. He hecho pequeñas reformas, como rehabilitación, pero siempre me ha gustado vivir en voto con la naturaleza. Bueno, mira, aquí Sergio, aquí vamos a hacer una bancada de trabajo, ¿no? mm. con las vigas que hemos recuperado de, del techo, me las pules, me las ensemblas bien, mm. y luego pondremos unas patas, ¿no? y haremos algunos cajones también para poner las herramientas. Es evidente que encontrar y entrar y vivir dentro de lo que es la casa existente, tal como es, es algo que te da unos valores muy importantes a la hora de proyectar. Yo me he dado cuenta durante los años de que cuando entraba en una casa existente con paredes gruesas y con una volumetría humana, pues automáticamente me sentía bien. En contraposición, cuando haces una unificación de obra nueva, eh, si no te fijas en los materiales, pues puede cambiar muchísimo el ambiente. ¿no? Entonces, desde hace muchos años ya estoy experimentando cómo hacían las casas anteriormente, que eran con materiales como la cal, que es un material transpirable, entonces ya nos funciona a nivel térmico y también a nivel acústico. Son materiales que realmente te sientes bien, te dan un buen confort. Los materiales naturales, como las vigas de madera, cañizo, ¿no? los artesanos de cañizo, acústicamente funciona muy bien y también nos dan un aspecto cálido. Sin llegar a ser un folclore, que es algo que no me gusta, ¿no? intento ser lo más depurado posible, pero siempre y cuando no quede un, un proyecto o una estancia demasiado fría. ¿no? Para mí, el sentirme bien en una casa y tener sueños y fantasías me interesa mucho. Sabarralina es una finca de 200 hectáreas que lindan con el mar, donde el cliente pues, quería jugar a una vida diferente. Tiene muchos hijos, lo que se ha creado es un ambiente muy, muy de vacaciones y de una cierta fantasía. Había edificios existentes, que era una antigua granja de vacas. Estos edificios pues, eran edificios muy pobres y muy simples y no había nada de sombra en ningún lado. El cliente es aficionado para caballo y lo, lo que es esencial realmente pues, de, tiene unos senderos de caminos de arena entre pinares. Eh, me fijé en su volumen, que tenía unos volúmenes importantes, pero le faltaba un 50% por otro lado, ¿no? lo cual completamos con el otro 50% por ciento y creamos una clastra, un patio interior muy interesante. La casa en sí tenía unas alturas considerables. Escuchando lo que me estaba diciendo el edificio, pues ha respetado al máximo para crear zonas diferentes. Un poco lo que me gusta, ¿no? que de exterior se ven unas pequeñas ventanas, algunas ventanas más grandes, pero en el interior sí es donde realmente vives, en cierto refugio de lo que es la finca. Reformamos lo que es el edificio principal, creamos una piscina que es como una alberca de 15 por 15, un poco elevada, para poder tener una visión de los jardines que se crearon todos con plantas mediterráneas, con ventisco, con romero. Luego reformamos las antiguas vaquerías que también un poco más lejos, donde se han puesto cuadras de caballos y con un patio central para poder hacer todos los trabajos de equitación, a nivel de rajes, de limpieza de caballos, con una zona de agua, con un agregadero. Cuando montas a caballo, la sensación es de que el tiempo no ha pasado. No había nada, lo que sí que había es un paisaje muy especial, que era las, estas dos montañas ¿no? de, de Álvaro. Fui bastantes veces en la finca, 
Y siempre me estaban indicando cómo tenía que orientar la casa. Pues siempre el eje ha sido estas dos montañas. Mira, Daniel, es aquí han hecho una serie de muestras. Visto lo visto, esta parece que es la que sí. nos gusta más, ¿no? Es la más natural, ¿no? Sí, más mate y va a quedar más integrada. Y como, vamos a hacer como unas olas, ¿no? Pequeñas olas, para que no quede una cosa totalmente con un cristal. ¿no? Que se acoplará muy bien con lo, la, todo el portón de, 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 de marés que hemos hecho, porque lo vamos a envejecer después, ¿no? Luego, cuando haya crecido las parras y todo, van a hacer sombras, ¿no? Y con las ventanas, el foseado este que le hacemos, también nos crea un, unas sombras y da una tranquilidad a toda la fachada. Sí, sí, sí. La pregunta siempre es la misma, ¿no? ¿Esta casa existía o no, no? Evidentemente, las que existían es más fácil de hacer que sean como hubiesen estado en el tiempo, pero las de nueva planta, ahí es un reto más complicado. Bueno, mira, ¿ves? Este es el ladrillo romano que por fin se ha conseguido la tonalidad que queríamos. Y tiene muchos cambios de colores, sí, eh, sí. super bonitos, sí, sí. cantos irregulares. Pues va a dar la sensación de, 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 de eterno, ¿no? Entonces es donde intervienen pues, las personas que aún tienen una maestría, tienen también una sensibilidad para aplicar los materiales. Aparte de esto, se intenta escoger materiales de recuperación que sean realmente de recuperación, porque hay muchas imitaciones que luego no es lo mismo. Y aplicarlos con mucha delicadeza, mucha moderación, para que no tengamos diferentes contrastes. Que nada destaca de una pared o una fachada a otra. ¿no? Si observas lo que han hecho las personas de la antigüedad, aprendes mucho. ¿no? Ya los romanos dejaban unas ovejas sueltas en el campo y donde las ovejas se paraban y dormían era donde ellos construían su vivienda. ¿no? Esto realmente no lo hago con ovejas, lo hago conmigo mismo y me gusta mucho porque realmente esto me da la fluidez como para diseñar el proyecto. Sonseguí es una finca que es un total de unos 6.000 metros cuadrados de casa y se han construido unas cuadras para caballos de unos 2.000 metros cuadrados con un sistema de paredes de adobe, de tierra de la excavación. El edificio existente estamos en fase de, de ruir para reconstruir. Siento mucho respeto ¿no? a, la, a la construcción. Y ella luego te indica el camino que tienes que recorrer para hacer el nuevo proyecto. Darle confort que se necesita en los tiempos que vivimos, pero sin destruir lo que ya existía de forma de vivir. La tecnología nos ha ido ayudando y siempre intento compaginar lo que es tradicional, natural, a la tecnología. Todo esto hace que si estás encima, es como un concierto. Y con la arquitectura pasa un poco lo mismo. ¿no? Si escuchas mucho a todos los industriales, a todos los artesanos, y tú les estás dirigiendo, pues llegamos a un buen acuerdo. Es un reto importante porque en esto también hay una parte económica, según qué proyectos, sobre todo a nivel de hoteles, pues hombre, hay por supuesto que no te puedes pasar. A nivel de estudio, de pastidas, de arquitectura, cuando nos hemos ido, se ha ejecutado todo el proyecto, ver que no hemos dejado un sello demasiado profundo, que no se ve que hemos intervenido, para mí es muy importante. Hombre, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo estáis? ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo? No, no te haces la idea de que existe este espacio dentro. Pero, ostras, pero doble fachada, no. esto sí, esto sí, 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 y aquí para ya. Aquí ya para. <risa> Ese que me gusta es la sorpresa, que decir, de pasar de, un, de, un, de una zona más, más reducida a una zona mucho más amplia, ¿no? El, de espacios, de luces, de vistas, ¿no? Y en las vistas, pues el estar centrar muy bien los ejes de las ventanas y las puertas, pues me da una sensación de tranquilidad, de profundidad. Lo que se nota realmente que Sergio Bastidas ya ha pasado es en las direcciones del edificio. La luz y la sombra, la transición de luz y sombra, es la que crea el espacio, 
creando unas aberturas no muy grandes realmente, pues lo que se hace es matizar, tamizar la luz y te da un espíritu de tranquilidad. ¿no? la sensación que das está bien recibido, que es importante. ¿no? Muchas veces pecas de zonas monumentales que lo que hacen es, es empequeñecerte. ¿no? Para mí ha sido muy importante el tema de la vegetación, el paisajismo, porque es una pieza fundamental en el acabado de la casa. Es la bienvenida a un edificio, ¿no? a un espacio. Finca Serena ya era un agroturismo muy sencillo, antes era una finca agrícola, evidentemente, y me encargaron pues, eh, subirla de categoría, ¿no? hacer un hotel con más confort. Lo que se ha hecho es eh, reconvertir los espacios, intentando pues, disimular un poco eh, la parte rústica que se había querido dar, ¿no? que para mí es una palabra horrible, ¿no? el tema rústico, porque no quiere decir nada. En cambio, pues, se ha intentado pues, que sea una arquitectura lo más tradicional posible y que quede lo más integrada en el, en el paisaje. ¿no? También se me encargó un proyecto de paisajismo. Se han creado unos caminos naturales con tierra apisonada. Yo, con mi afición a montar a caballo, pues, eh, estuve montando a caballo varios días por la propiedad para encontrar los caminos que después serían los senderos para los futuros clientes que podrían ir haciendo footing o trekking o en fin, una parte esportiva ¿no? también. ¿no? La finca tiene un carácter totalmente agrícola, donde el cual se plantaron viñas que son, están en producción y también se crearon puertos en los cuales pues, se nutren los restaurantes que existen. Los caminos están hechos. ¿no? Si tú eres capaz de sentirlos, pues evidente que te va a ayudar a hacer los nuevos caminos, pero siempre respetando lo que ya existía, ¿no? Porque la gente que ha vivido sabía el por qué, por qué no, las luces, el calor, el calor, las sombras, todo esto, ya lo intuían y lo tenían muy claro, ¿no? No somos nosotros los que hemos inventado. El arquitecto Don León Arquitect Leon Creer will read the laudatio of the laureate. Honored academicians, ladies and gentlemen, dear Michael Gallo, Querido Michael Gallo and Rosanne. Michael Gallo and Rosanne were the best friends of Michael Richard Drias, and they continue. They are now in head of the trust, the Richard Drias Trust, who is looking after the future of Richard's uh, cultural project. Because it is a vast cultural project, it's in, in fact a counter project. And I think that Richard would be very pleased 
to come back to Madrid because I noticed that in the last 10 years uh, we have been coming here that things have changed. There used to be lots of building sites, some really ghastly buildings going up and more recently you can notice that many of the great classical buildings of the center are being optimally restored. It's really a pleasure to come here to see the completion of the buildings around the Academia San Fernando and particularly the great lighting, street lighting, which has raised there. Richard was very, very enamored with good lighting and hated absolutely uh, the disgusting modernist lighting, which unfortunately has destroyed the evening impressions of the Gran Via, one of the greatest avenues in the world. Some ignorant has put lampposts there which destroy what the quality of that beautiful street by night, not by day. So Richard was also, I, I continue in the mood because he was also rather polemical but always polite, which his opponents uh, cannot really be applauded in that direction. So what Richard has done is to discover a uh, secret army, l'armée de l'ombre, as one spoke of the French resistance, who work at doing the right thing in adverse conditions. Now for many years there was no glory to do the right thing. The things which were done by Rafael Manzano in this country, you cannot imagine the difficulties he had to do these beautiful buildings. The same for Quinn and Terry or Robert Adam in England. The same for Sergio Bastidas, who nobody knew. And I, a friend, showed me pictures of Sergio Bastidas' work. So I said, this, this is our candidate for the Manzano, for the next Manzano Prize. Uh, I wrote to his office, Javier Seneca Cafelaya, also Manzano Prize glory, um, laureate, wrote to him and we didn't get an answer. One day, <coughs> I was, a year later, something like that, I sat in a restaurant with Irene who has done this beautiful film and uh, as we speak French, uh, there was a gentleman sitting next to me who said, ah, you speak French, yeah. how nice. So we started speaking and uh, he spoke perfect French and within five minutes we knew we were friends. We knew we agreed about everything, politics, about Catalan <laughs> problems, <laughs> particularly about architecture and art. And I said, what's your name? And he said, Sergi Bastidas. I said, what? I've been looking for you for a year. Why didn't you answer? He said, well, I had a secretary who didn't answer letters. <laughs> and uh, from there on, I, I visit many of his buildings. And it is so interesting that people of that quality never had like Donald Gray or like Manzano internationally, never had any recognition for their extraordinary work. Because what they are, they are people who are in love with their places, with their countries, with their landscape. And if you look at the care and love with which Sergi Bastidas or Donald Gray or Manzano built, but also integrate their buildings in the old towns, the love and respect with which they, they do their landscaping, you see, you understand what's going on. Everything which Sergi says in that film you understand without explanation, without tra translation, uh, because he speaks a language which is commonly understood. And the beauty of traditional architecture doesn't need any complicated, you don't need to sit to recite Heidegger and, I don't know, Jean-Paul Sartre to make clear what he is doing because this love is something which is a spontaneous feeling which is unrepressible. And people, despite the terrible education 
most people receive in most countries nowadays, not just in China. That love for beautiful things still survives. I walk a lot in this town. I see constantly people who walk in the street who look at buildings who have nothing to do with architecture because they are so spectacularly beautiful. And I think Sadri is somebody who had to work in the shadow, l'armée de l'ombre, to do the right thing. He unfortunately had only to work for very fine, rich clients. He never had any public work, never built a school, any public works uh, uh, which would be commissioned by public authority. And it is so important that this Academy of San Fernando, which is a link between the Armée de l'Ombre, the people who do the right thing, the beautiful things, and the state institutions, that this celebration happens here in this beautiful room by Trecker, by the great architect Trecker, well, on which I think in this room our dear friend Raphael worked as an, as an apprentice. Now, Sergi is an, uh, a very special character who uh, did not, you cannot find uh, academic achievements, he would be brilliant, he would be uh, shining with. He learned the métier on the ground. His father was developer, an important developer in Barcelona, and uh, he then worked for his father, did restorations, rebuildings, and uh, he learned particularly, he was an apprentice of Enrique Frank Millet, and he learned how to join materials, uh, to, to do models for things, for objects, design objects, and work with the artisans, how these materials, natural or synthetic, are worked and joined. And then you see in all his buildings, there's a love of natural materials, even though he used some synthetics because they are, that's what's re required by the new norms. Uh, what is exposed is materials for which there's thousands and thousands of years of experience, of aging, of techniques, which are so mastered that the people who design, build, live, restore, sell, or inherit is a long chain of pleasure, of love, which is automatically and without explanation carries throughout history the longevity of these beautiful structures because there is a common language, a, co a common language of construction which everyone understands without any complication. So it's very extraordinary that this should be the first time uh, Sergi Bastidas is very great talent and great lover <laughs> should should get such an academic recognition, much merited. So, I think what, is, what we need to understand and carry out into the world, and which Richard was so uh, dedicated to do, was that we need to reclaim that know-how and that knowledge of love, of building beautiful places, which is really love of natural materials, how to uh, so the people who are engaged in construction and, and management feel the same pleasure in, in being involved in a building process than the designer. And it is still after, I'm now 75 years, I have thought about this problem we have for about 60 years, and it's incomprehensible to me how this treasure of knowledge and know-how of handling traditional building knowledge how it could be abandoned for experiments, experiments with synthetic materials, ideas which had never uh, been tested, and could become so generalized broadly after the Second World War in all uh, uh, earthly states, whether totalitarian or democratic, was the same story. And it was kind of coup d'etat against the traditional crafts, against the human scale uh, moods of construction and conception. And I think that is what we are up against, because what's happening now politically is, and to our health system is what happened to architecture uh, about 70 years ago. So I think we have to be very aware that things are not really looking up and that we have to consider these occasions as extremely precious 
and should get as much recognition as possible. I can't say that I'm intrigued and very pleased that the president of the Baleares, her name is, I forget, the, of the Council of Baleares, the uh, President del, del Consejo. La Signora uh, has complimented Sergi Bastidas for his great work, and, and I hope that soon he will uh, look after problems like sort of greater things for the public good. Thank you very much for your attention. Mr. Sergi Bastidas will now receive the prize. Mr. Sergi Bastidas has the floor. Your Excellency, Director of the Royal Academy of San Fernando. Your Excellency, Mr. Rodeber Adam. Chairman Davin Bao, members of the Academy, Your Excellencies, dear friends, good evening. I would like to start by thanking Richard Rehaus in memoriam, Rafael Manzano, Ian Bao for having appointed me honorary member and Leon Clear for these uh, very nice words of uh, introduction. I'd like to thank the members of my team, Rocío, Boris, Gerard, Tonina, Yolanda, Rocío number two, Enrique, Lucas, and Roberto. I would like to thank also my wife and my family. Traditional architecture is a trilogy, the use of natural materials, local constructive systems, and craftsmen. Architecture whose principles are aesthetics, utility and harmony between the interior and the exterior spaces, which are as timeless as nature itself. It is in this nature, in this environment, where my buildings are uh, integrated, and they blend not only with the environment, but with, with each other, the old part with the modern part. To merge is a homogeneous mixture of the original parts of the building and the new constructions. To restore and preserve the character of the place. My buildings combine the best of both worlds. We go from old or existing architecture to contemporary and comfortable architecture. Austere elegance, humanity, and the well-being of the residents coexist with modern comfort, smart living, and ecology 
I make heritage, preservation and modernity to go hand in hand. I have a clear vision of the initial concept, whether it is new construction or restoration. My vision is a result of my experience and my ability to see things in three dimensions. My imagination helps me realize very quickly the initial idea for the building. Afterwards, I visit the project sites many times to reaffirm my initial vision. I look at the trajectory of the sun, which indicates the exposure of the house, so I can choose the best views. It is at that moment when I understand the project and I start to develop it. Then I use organic structures because they adapt especially well, perfectly to traditional architecture and at the same time to new elements, for instance, spirals, star cases and skylights to create natural light that casts both lights and shadows. All of these moments are influenced by my sculpture classes in Barcelona where I learned about volumes. I would like to thank my mentor, Enrique Frank, thanks to whom I have worked with the best craftsmen in Barcelona, blacksmiths, carpenters, painters and builders. This is how I learned about the variations, the different uses and the limits of materials and the possibilities and the limits of other building masters. My sons, Gerard and Boris, collaborate in my architectural firm. We often argue about the best solution. Each one of us is right from his own perspective. Our constructive disputes often yield extraordinary results. Our children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren want and must contribute to shaping the future in a responsible manner. On that path, I would like to contribute parts of this prize to a project for the future of modern, traditional, vernacular architecture in the Balearic Islands. In Bastidas Architects, we have not yet made a final internal decision on the funding option. We will communicate it shortly. My goal is always the same that architecture is practical, comfortable and simple without great pretensions. Obtaining places and buildings with a unique context. That once the project is finished and our team has left, you can hardly notice that we were there. Thank you very much. A continuación se proyectará un video. Now a video will be shown on the professional career of Jose Maria Ballester, the winner of the third Richard Driehaus Medal for the. Uh, Estamos en la Casa Rectoral, que es nuestra sede en el Valle del Nansa, donde comenzó el programa Patrimonio y Territorio de la Fundación Botín, con una doble finalidad, un doble objetivo, un aspecto patrimonio y un aspecto riqueza, generación de riqueza, que son la base para ese repoblamiento rural que todos buscamos.
Desde el siglo XX asistimos a una evolución importante de la noción misma de patrimonio cultural. Entonces, el patrimonio se limitaba a los monumentos religiosos, civiles o militares. Poco a poco se fue forjando la idea de que había otros tipos de arquitectura, otros tipos de bienes que también formaban parte del patrimonio cultural, la arquitectura rural, la arquitectura vernacular, el propio patrimonio industrial, además de que el patrimonio, los monumentos, los edificios singulares, fuera cual fuera su jerarquía, pues tenían un entorno. Y conservar ese entorno era tan importante como conservar el propio monumento. Luego nos dimos cuenta de que había otro tipo de bienes, en parte material y en parte inmaterial, que eran los sitios. Los sitios donde habían ocurrido cosas importantes, historias importantes, tenían también un gran valor evocador de, de los hechos que allí habían ocurrido. Y fue tomando cuerpo la idea del patrimonio material y material situado en su entorno, fue tomando cuerpo la idea de paisaje. Y cuando yo estaba en el Consejo de Europa, después de hacer el convenio europeo para la salvaguarda del patrimonio arquitectónico, donde ya se reconocían las diferentes categorías de patrimonio cultural, empezó a cobrar cuerpo la idea de que también hacía falta un convenio para el paisaje. Y fue trabajando en el tema del paisaje donde nos dimos cuenta que estábamos haciendo algo más que salvar unos bienes culturales o algo más que proteger. Estábamos incidiendo directamente en lo que iba a ser el marco de vida de las personas que habitaban allí de que el paisaje era el propio territorio. Eso es lo que había que hacer, entender el territorio, ir explotando el territorio para ver qué tipo de recursos nos ofrecía, tanto en lo material como en lo inmaterial, ¿no? Que no se puede entender una aldea sin entender el paisaje que la rodea, no solo desde un punto de vista estético o natural, sino desde un punto de vista también económico y funcional, porque es el que permitió que esas aldeas llegaran hasta nosotros. Esto comenzó hace 15 años. El primer paso fue hacer un análisis territorial muy completo que está publicado. Buscábamos, sobre todo, promover una inteligencia del territorio que incluyera sus recursos naturales, sus recursos paisajísticos, sus recursos culturales, como una globalidad que hay que tratar conjuntamente con los saberes y las actividades económicas que, a partir de esos recursos, ha venido generando a lo largo de la historia, la población. Hombre, José Muy María, bien. buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal? Estar, ¿Qué, ¿Qué tal, tal estás? Está? Muy bien, pues me nada, aquí. Muy contento de estar en la fuente. Hombre. Tu visita siempre es bienvenida aquí. Pues te encanta de verte, ¿vienes de segar? Sí, hombre, venimos de segarle un poco a las vacas. A la para, hierba, para el invierno, para... que es largo. Mientras se sigue la hierba, sí, hombre, sí. si se puede evitar que los montes se vayan cegando, pues en realidad estamos contribuyendo a que se, con... se conserve ah, sí, el paisaje. Y, y la hierba, metemos todo lo que podemos. Claro. Cuidamos a la vaca como muchas no. veces mejor que a la mujer. <risa> Ahí me lo pidió el presidente de la Fundación. Me pidió un programa sobre el patrimonio, que fue un programa de intervención moderno. Yo le propuse hacer que fuera 
un paso más para considerar el propio territorio como patrimonio. A él le gustó la idea, pero me dijo que eso tenía que generar riqueza. Sí, Entonces, bueno, para generar riqueza, aparte de otras iniciativas, pusimos en marcha este programa que estáis, al que os habéis adherido tantos jóvenes ganaderos. Sí, hombre, aquí en la comarca del Nansa, unos 30 o 35 ganaderos sí, de, de, de Tudanca, de, de, de esa raza que es tan, tan rústica. Bueno, y tan propia de aquí. Sí. Cuando se tiene una concepción patrimonial del territorio, ocurre que el desarrollo conjunto de esos recursos va generando una misma dinámica. Una vez era un pueblo decrépito y que se estaba hundiendo con dos habitantes. Hicimos una obra importante en la iglesia, restauración de las escuelas, la casa rectoral que hay encima, y es que de repente empezamos a ver casas que se restauraban. Pero lo cierto es que el pueblo ha recuperado la vida y eso es el efecto inducido del patrimonio. Yo gestiono eh, la actividad de 150 ganaderos eh, que producen eh, carne eh, bajo el sello de la denominación eh, geográfica protegida de la IGP eh, para comercializar sus productos a, a una cadena de supermercados que es local, es de aquí de, de Cantabria, eh, la cadena Lupa Semarc. La IGP eh, es una indicación geográfica protegida que trabaja con las razas autóctonas de, de Cantabria en mínimo la IGP nos marca tres meses de amamantamiento en, en pastoreo, que siempre suele ser más porque lo ideal es utilizar lo más posible el recurso forrajero que existe, los montes y los pastos de estas zonas, y cuando los animales tienen entre cinco y seis meses eh, bajan a los propios cebaderos, a las cuadras de ese ganaderos. Estos animales tienen un valor de un 50% más que si lo vendieran de pasteros. Pasteros son los animales que están en pastoreo con sus madres y que se vendían con una edad muy temprana, de cinco meses. Llevamos comercializados unos 13.000 eh, terneros a lo largo de estos 11 años ya que va a hacer. Que esto ha supuesto pues, dinero fijado en la zona de unos 13 millones de euros, que supone un gran valor eh, económico. El valor añadido lo hemos dejado en las ganaderías, no se lo llevan unos segundos y terceros tratantes. Ese dinero se ha conseguido fijar en el ganadero, que es capaz de vender al final el producto final casi prácticamente al consumidor directamente. Ese es el milagro que hay que buscar en el mundo rural. Que personas que no tenían costumbre de moverse, digamos, en los canales de distribución y en los mercados, de repente hacer un producto bueno y, y se metemos en uno de los principales establecimientos de España a vender sus productos. Acometimos una acción muy amplia de eh, formación de emprendedores, de emprendimiento rural. Y bueno, de ahí han salido una cuarentena de negocios que ya funcionan y Muchos puestos de trabajo. Se han desarrollado muchas actividades. Una cosa te da otra, siempre hay un Estamos promoviendo que surja de ellos, que sean ellos los que elijan el tipo de desarrollo rural que quieren, que sean ellos los que en realidad pues, hagan como hemos hecho cualquiera de nosotros, que es inventarse su vida. Lo que hemos hecho aquí es definir un método de trabajo y un modelo de intervención. ¿no? Y eso tenía que ser transferible, como empieza a serlo ya, a otros lugares. Y luego, en Valderredible, fue una solicitud del gobierno de Cantabria a la Fundación. Pero a partir de lo que habíamos hecho aquí. Thank you.
esta parte hay una red de cortafuegos y de pistas que puede llegar a sí, hay algunas manchas algunos pero bueno pues... Bueno, José María, has venido a mi pueblo, a Loma Somera, uno de los 53 pueblos de Valderredible, de nuestro ayuntamiento, de nuestro municipio, y aquí tenemos a nuestras espaldas uno de los árboles eh, centenarios que tenemos aquí en, en esta zona. Este es el roble La Piruta. Nosotros tenemos cantidad de recursos, recursos naturales, forestales, tenemos el río Ebro, tenemos un patrimonio cultural y arquitectónico extraordinario, las iglesias irmitas rupestres, el románico, tenemos caminos históricos, el camino de Santiago, etc. De lo que se trata en definitiva es de recuperar un poco un territorio como es Valderredible, gracias a, a ese plan de dinamización que está muy avanzado, bueno, pues estamos planteando iniciativas para recuperar población y fijar población, sobre todo gente joven. Lo único que hay que hacer es apoyar, ayudar, dinamizar para que esos saberes se apliquen y se multipliquen, eh, digamos, con las nuevas tecnologías, con la conectividad que estamos buscando, para que las personas que los habitan vivan mejor y para que viviendo mejor quieran que sus hijos sigan aquí y se fije la población, que es el objetivo último. Yo creo que la gran cuestión que tenemos que plantearnos ahora es qué papel juega el patrimonio cultural y natural, puesto que ya son la misma cosa, en el modelo de sociedad, ver en qué manera mejora nuestra vida, mejora nuestra conciencia, hace que nos comprendamos mejor nosotros mismos y que comprendamos mejor al otro. Es decir, de qué manera el patrimonio cumple la función social que en realidad es la función social que nos dicta la historia. El excelentísimo señor don Alfredo Pérez de Millán. excelencia Alfredo Pérez de Millán. Y el asistente director de la Academia will read the laudatio of the laureate. Señor director, um, señores académicos, director, miembros de la Academia, el chairman of Inbau, Director General of Architecture and Conservation of the City of Madrid, representatives of the, Rash, of the Richard Rehaus Charitable Lead Trust, dear Jose Maria, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me that I appreciate that the Royal Academy, together with the Inbau Network and the Dre House Charitable Lead Trust, have bestowed upon me their responsibility to praise the merits and the personality and the work of my dear friend Jose Maria Ballester, whom I have known for more than 50 years and or to whom we are presenting the Richard Driehaus Medal for the Conservation of Heritage in its third edition. As we have just seen in this splendid video, the recipient of this medal, beautifully designed by our friend and fellow member of the Academy, Rafael Manzano, he deserves, or rather, he uh, has all of the merits that um, our dear friend Richard Rehaus thought when he uh, instituted it. For nearly 55 years, Jose Maria Ballester has played a key role in all sorts of activities recognized by the medal, such as between 67 and 79 as an art critic 
journalist, curator of exhibitions, promoter and founder of cultural institutions such as the Hispania Nostra Association, which will soon receive the Medal of Honor of this Academy during since 79 until his retirement in 2003. He was the head of a division and a later director of culture and cultural and narrative natural heritage of the Council of Europe, appointed by the then Secretary General of the organization, Marcelino Oreja. From uh, 2003 until today, he was the chairman of uh, the jury of the European Union Europa Nostra Awards for Cultural Heritage between 2010 and 2013, member of the Executive Council of the Europa Nostra, uh, Europa Nostra Federation until 2018, member of the uh, government bodies of other cultural institutions, coordinator of the program for the conservation of the Cave of Altamira. But he did not only participate in these activities, but he was behind their inspiration as well, especially through the uh, conventions of the Council of Europe, of which he was one of the authors, the European Convention for the Safeguard of Architectural Heritage, Granada, 1985, the European Convention for the Protection of Archaeological Heritage, La Valeta, 1992, and the European Convention on Landscape, Florence, 2000 and he will be recognized as one of the main authors of the international regulation currently in force about cultural uh, heritage. Ever since he was young, Ballester always defended a very wide notion of cultural heritage, which incorporated landscape and natural environment as uh, elements of uh, the heritage following on the lines of many intellectuals such as Francisco Giner de los Ríos, Miguel de Unamuno, Manuel Bartolo Cosillo, the Earls of Villaviciosa de Asturias, Elias Tormo, El, El, eh, Manuel Gómez Moreno, Leopoldo Torres Balbás, Ricardo de Urueta, Javier de Huitusen, Antonio Gallego Burín, Gabriel Alomar, Manuel de Terán, or Fernando Chueca Goitia. Many of them were also uh, distinguished members of this academy. In the case of uh, the recipient of the medal, I have to make a special mention about the influence on his training and his thinking of his uncle, the Marquis of Lozoya, director of this corporation, an author of the uh, first integral protection of the cities of Santiago de Compostela, Toledo, and Segovia, which included the surrounding landscape and uh, the views through decrees approved in 1940 and 41. But during his long stay in Strasbourg, Mr. Ballester joined the uh, so-called intelligence of the territory movement. Through this intelligence, heritage, cultural heritage, material and immaterial, and natural heritage, transcends the realm of its knowledge, use and enjoyment as an expression of history and culture. And with this, cultural heritage not only carries cultural values but reinforces and renews them socially. This concept guarantees the survival of the geographic environment and the continuity of cultural tradition in a society which is subject to fast and profound transformations that demand a, a, a renewed awareness of its meaning. I have to be brief. So I will not mention the many programs in which Jose Maria Ballester has participated. I would just like to highlight the four most relevant cases. First, the current European cultural itineraries that was established in 1987, uh, based on the first of these routes, the Camino de Santiago, the roads to Santiago. Second, 
the program for the assistance and technical assistance and cooperation for cultural heritage in European and Eastern European, uh, Central and Eastern European countries in 91 after the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Third, the program for the safeguard of the cultural heritage of the old Yugoslavia on the occasion of the Balkan War implemented by Council of Europe and UNESCO between 91 and 95. And finally, the um, heritage and territory program that uh, was carried out in uh, vastly depopulated areas of Cantabria, the valleys of the Nansa, Peña Rubia, and Valde Redible by the Marcelino Botin Foundation in 2003. This last program has really revealed the dual dimension of the personality of uh, Mr. Ballester, the author of principles and standards on the one hand, and the actor behind their implementation on the other. The valuable contribution of Jose Maria Ballester to the protection, conservation, management, and promotion of cultural heritage has gathered many recognitions, such as the gold medal of uh, the fine arts and the royal order of Isabel la Católica. He was also appointed a, a member of the Academy of this Academy and of the uh, Academy of History and Art of San Quirce de Segovia. And he was also appointed uh, honorary member of the National Center of Culture in Portugal. So uh, awarding this medal to is just uh, another recognition in the long list of awards received by Jose Maria Ballester throughout his life, who uh, was dedicated fully to the integration of culture, history, and geography in current society as the legacy of the past of humankind to guarantee its continuity and enrichment in the present and its transmission to our future generations, according to the spirit of the founder of this medal, Mr. Richard Driehaus. Thank you very much. El señor Don Robert Adam hace de la Mr. Robert Adam will present the medal to Mr. Jose Maria Ballester. El señor Don José María Ballester. Mr. José María Ballester has the floor. Mr. Director of the Royal Academy of Bellas Artes of San Fernando, members of the Academy, Mr. Chairman of INBAU, Director General of Architecture and Conservation of the City of Madrid, representatives of the Dre House Charitable Lead Trust, Mayors, ladies and gentlemen, an inexcusable duty of memory leads me today to remember Mr. Richard Rehaus, who left us last March. In just a few years, he had become one of the main patrons of traditional architecture, arts, and crafts, their techniques, their materials, with a special predilection, which he never concealed, towards the heritage of Spain and Portugal. 
our duty now is to continue his work. In this ceremony, my words obviously can only express gratitude. You honor me with this medal that bears his name when my professional career is approaching 50 years of dedication to cultural heritage. This gratitude does not prevent me from remembering my co-workers in this long adventure, especially the Marquis of Lozoya, Mr. Antonio Fontan at the Madrid newspaper and Mr. Marcelino Oreja at the Council of Europe and my colleagues in this long trajectory which has been so generously uh, mentioned by the assistant director of this academy. Some of them are in this room today. If there were some achievements, those achievements are also due to them with whom I would also like to share this medal. And of course, I have to mention the support from my wife and the influence that I received in my family environment both in my parents' home and in my extended family in Segovia, where even when they were speculating very intuitively and with very good sense about a new concept of landscape which attracted me strongly. And this concept is beautifully expressed in the decrees that declare historical ensembles as artistic and historical ensembles the cities of Toledo and Segovia back in the 1940s thanks to the Marquis of Lozoya, then Director General of Fine Arts and later Director of this uh, Academy. The European Landscape Convention has in the, uh, approved in the year 2000 has just renewed the legitimacy of this decrees. For this reason, I am happy to receive this medal at the same time that the Rafael Manzano Prize is awarded to architect Sergi Bastidas, whose vocation is to blend the architecture with the territory. Little by little, I was won over by the ambition to extend the very concept of heritage, both cultural and natural, to the point of identifying it with the territory as a whole, so that we could be able to approach the territory from a heritage perspective. Landscape, says the Florence Convention, is nothing other than the territory as perceived by its inhabitants. Landscape and territory have always been the combined work of both man and nature. Throughout history, many anthropic processes have taken place in the territory that have given it its current appearance thanks to the knowledge the activities that generate this knowledge which created the cultural landscape through the resources offered by the territory and the way of life of its inhabitants. Hence, the character of story of history that the landscape always has in a given territory. That is its value as part of the heritage. We just need to make it intelligible. That's all. Thank you.
para finalizar el acto con una breve Finally, we will close this session with a brief musical uh, performance from Maria Teresa Solano, Fantasy in B minor by Johann Sebastian Bach. Se levanta la sesión. La sesión is adjourned.